Hi everybody, I'm Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we are missing Eli because he does not get up out of bed. And I cannot get him out of bed, so I'm throwing him completely under the bus. So anytime you do not hear Eli, that dude gets up, sits on the side of the bed, and will not come out. But we love him, and we love you guys very much. Oh, Eli's here. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? How are you, you're up? Roasted. <laughs> you roasted? You heard us talking about you, huh? Yeah, we sit out here for quite a while waiting for Eli because he's my navigator. And so he's the guy that runs the top scriptures at the top. And so without him, it kind of goes um, haywire. All right, so how are you guys doing? Good. All right, so today we are in Revelations and we are um, continuing on in Revelations. And I guess before this, let me, let me take you guys to a um, little cool thing that we have right here. This is on the Yahoo and the Torah site. Um, since you guys are with us under Revelations... There is some amazing stuff right now, and this is for more for um, teachers or um, people who are needing this text for other things. Now, the book of Revelations that we're completely reading right here, if you guys go to Scripture Source Downloads, there are five different, there'll actually be six formats when we are done with this. Right here, what you see, this is how we have the Open Source Bible Project, and if you look... Six versions of it right now, and then the seventh will be the WordPress plugin that we have. And so this is the Re this is the Book of Revelation, and what you guys are reading right now is is the one on the WordPress plugin that we're going to be reading here. And um, if you want this, the most popular version of this is the um, is this PDF. Where is the PDF right there? There it is right there. Revelation PDF, and that is the most popular version. But if you have a Kindle or you have an ebook book, book um, reader of any kind whatsoever, the EPUB is awesome. It's super quick. And um, these things are all available absolutely free of charge, yahooandthetorah.net. And um, they are there for you guys. All right, so now let us begin. And um, this is an interesting chapter. I, I think this is the future, but it reads like things that we've already seen in the past. And so let's see if we can get our minds around this and figure this out and um, see exactly what it's talking about. Okay. And a great sign was seen in the Shemaim, a woman clad with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of 12 stars. Okay. Let's, let's start with this. So I think the 12 stars represent the 12 tribes. Right. I think. Okay. The, the question, the, the, the woman is, uh, well, what I think the woman is, is the mother of Messiah. Right, it, it, I believe the mother of Messiah because it starts coming down in here, and it seems like this is all about Messiah. So we have twelve stars um, around her head as the crowns. Um, we also have the moon under her feet, and um, she's clad with the sun. So I'm guessing that she's like super bright, like you're not going to be able to to see her is, is what it looks like. And maybe, had, maybe some kind of metaphor. It could, always. I mean, this whole thing is metaphorific um, for sure. But, um, again, that doesn't stop us from speculating on what exactly it is or what this would look like. And so what it looked like to John was it looked like a woman with, that was super bright, um, had the moon under her feet and 12 stars around her head. Okay, 12, two. And being pregnant, she cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. And another sign was seen in the Shemaim. And see, a great fiery red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on his head. Okay, the last chapter talked about a woman being pregnant. She cried out in labor to give birth, right? She was giving birth. Um, obviously, that's, that's easy. But then we see the next thing. We have a giant fiery red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns on his head. Now, do you guys, what do you guys make of that? If this guy has seven heads and ten horns, does one head have ten horns or does the seven heads have... One horn each. And uh, I think each has a horn. I don't think one horn has all horns. You know, you know, one head doesn't have all the horns? Yeah, I think, I think they're, each head has a horn. But, but one, if he has seven heads and only ten horns, there's going to be some mismatch. There's horns. probably going to be a main head, I'm thinking. Like, yeah, it's like gonna look, like they're going to be like a couple on one of side, unicorns three on or something. Other, yeah. <laughs> or something of a sort. Okay, let's continue on. And his tail draws a third of the stars of the Shemaim and throws them down to earth. Okay, let's stop before we can continue that. We know the story, right? A third of the messengers of, of Yah fell with Hasatan, right? And so let's speculate a little bit on this because we believe that this has already happened, that the war, that, that the dragon has already been, that Hasatan has already been tossed out of the Shemaim. 
Is everyone with me or not? I feel like he comes back all the time and talks to y'all. Well, there was a part that says after after they kicked him out, they were unable to go back in, into the heaven. Right, but I so maybe he hasn't been completely kicked out yet? I don't know. That's the thing. Is is are we in the past or are we in the future? I feel like this is all in the Shemaim stuff. Right, but would that be in the past or would that be in the future is the question. Because even though it's in the Shemaim, we don't know. We do know of the war. We do know of all of this stuff. So let's continue on and see if we can figure this out. Five. And she bore a male child who was to shepherd all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught away to Elohim and to his throne. Okay? Okay, so that's clearly like Yahushua. Right. That's clear. I mean, that's why I said the, the, the woman sounds like Miriam, or sounds like Mary, right? And what does it mean that is going to shepherd the nations with a rod of iron? Messiah came down and he he was peaceable for most of the time. There was only a couple of incidents that we had where he wasn't exactly, um, you know, flipping tables, flipping tables over and, and grabbing horse whips and things that wasn't exactly peaceable. But what does that mean? It's going to shepherd all the nations with a rod of iron. I think it's like going to keep like a firm grasp on the, on the, she, on the sheepfold, right? It's going to keep like a, a solid watch over them. Yeah. And, you know, that's our, that's our leader. Messiah Yahushua is our leader. And that is who, when he comes back, he's coming as a man of war. He's not coming as a the the peacekeeper. It, it will be peaceable for people who that are in Torah that are keeping the laws. And it's not going to be peaceable, but but it will be um, less of a challenge than if you are not. Okay. So again, now let's speculate because we didn't know if this is in the, the past or in the future. But now you know that this woman um, had a baby, right? And the baby, she bore a male child, and so this would be this would lead us to believe that this part was in the past. Right? Right. Jade, yes right. or no? Anyone else? You like your head down? Did you, you go back to bed on me? No. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. Six. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by Elohim to be nourished there 1,260 days. Okay. Anyone remember this number? It's uh, 1,000. It's about three. Some, some three well, years. Almost four years. Okay. Where have we heard this exact That's number? That's the prophets. The, cha the chapter before this. The, the chapter before this. 42 months. Yeah, so they are six. Huh? Three and a half. Three and a half years. So hey, when we're trying to figure out is if this is in the past or in the future, we know Messiah already came, so that has to be in the past. But then we, we don't know anything about the woman fleeing into the wilderness. What did that mean? We don't have any account of Miriam ever fleeing in the wilderness. So perhaps that is something in the future. We don't know exactly what this is. And, and again, like Brother Glenn says, there's a lot of metaphors here. And so we'll just uh, kick this out. So anyway, this is the exact same time that the um, prophets, those two uh, guys who are out uh, breathing fire, are talking to people. Okay. And there came to be fighting in the Shimei. Mikiel and his messengers fought against the dragon. And the dragon and his messengers fought, but they were not strong enough, nor was a place found for them in the Shemaim any longer. That's the Shemaim. Right, right. They're kicked out. But again, are we, is this the future or is this the past? I think it's the past. You think this is all the past? I think it's, I think they don't. Nicole, don't, you think it's all the past? I do. Okay. I don't think they're quite kicked out yet. You don't think everyone's kicked out of the Shemaim? I don't think, I think Hassan talks to Yahuwah. Comes back and talks to him. Maybe he does, but do you think all the rest of them do? We There's other accounts. Eli, what are the other accounts where the messengers are unable to go back up there because they've been tossed out? Do you remember? Uh, well, I mean, we had it right with Jacob's thing. Like, they were unable to go. That was Targum. We don't know if that's true. Yeah, that's Targum. We we, again, yeah, we don't know if that's true or not or if that's Jewish folklore. Um, okay, so let's let's continue on. But, and, uh, th but they were not strong enough, nor was any place found for them in the Shemaim any longer. And the great dragon was thrown out, the serpent of the old, of old, called the devil and Satan, who leads all the world astray. He was thrown to the earth, and his messengers were thrown out with him. So it sounds like past. stuff in the past, right? Yeah. So, so like Isaiah but, talked about. Right, but at the same time, we have things like um, how you know the thing about his his mother being chased into the wilderness and things like that. That's. Stuff we, we don't know. We, we're, this is going to be hard to grasp. Was she still been alive during the time of 70 AD? <laughs> Hold on, guys. All right, sorry for that, everyone. That's 10 pit bulls that live here. All right, um, thoughts on this? We were, I mean, uh, we so, know. Yeah, my question was, was Mary alive during the day in like 70 AD when Judah got destroyed? I do not know. I do not I know. Mean, she would have been, she she been really the, old. I know, maybe she ran in the wilderness. 
Maybe when it, maybe she did. I mean, she could have been around twenty years old and she had Messiah, and that would have only been seven years. She'd maybe ninety. But I think the thing about him attacking the woman was that he was trying to stop the Messiah from being born, uh, um, or attacking. I think her. it was a spiritual battle. I think over a physical one. You think this is all spiritual? Yeah, this is all a spiritual thing that happened in the past. All right, so we got a couple of folks think it's in the past. Um, I honestly think it's a it's got to be like a mix of the. Current and future and past? I, I don't know. All right, 10. And I heard a loud voice in the shime, saying in the Shimeen, Now have come the deliverance and the power and the reign of our Elohim and the authority of his Mashiach. For, for the accuser of our brothers who accused them before Elohim day and night has been thrown down. Okay, so um, I, what, what do you guys make of this? Right? If if um, do you think Hasatan is still able to get up into the Shamaim to talk to Yah? We know that in Job he's able to. Yeah, Job was one of the oldest books that they know of. They they don't know when that was done, but they, it was like one of the older ones. Um, okay, let's. I don't know either. Let I don't me. think we have any other conversations where like Hasan goes to Yah and is like, "Hey, your servants are than like Isaac and Job." We do know that he was trying to sift Peter like flour, and then he came to Messiah Yahushua and was being asked, uh, either Messiah Yahushua or Yah, to sift him like flour. Okay, 11. And they overcame him because of the blood of the Lamb, and because of the word of their witness, and they did not love their lives to the death. Okay, so these people overcame because of the blood of the Lamb. So this is... Future. Is this in the future? It mu- I mean, the, bl- has to be the, the blood of the lamb happened at Calvary. It happened when Messiah Yahushua was impaled and they killed him. And we got our Melchizedek priest. We got a perfect priest and we got our perfect lamb sacrifice. So we got both of them. We got our priest and we got our sacrifice. The only way that um, that happened was by that. So maybe this is in the future. In the future or best, guys? I think future. So, future. Everyone so future I think this is maybe already happened. Maybe he's talking about the time in 70 AD. You think 70 AD? Maybe. Okay. Well, when it says word and because of the word of their witness, the word is capitalized. What word? What are we talking about with word, Eli? Uh, Yahushua or the Torah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, the Yahushua walked the Torah perfectly. And so if you want to look at the word made flesh, that was the word made flesh. But that is not Yahuwah made flesh that that is not what that says and so that there's no such thing as the trinity the trinity is is not it's a doctrine of demons unfortunately 12 because of this rejoice o shamayim and you who dwell in them woe to the earth and the sea because the devil has come down to you having great wrath knowing that he has little time okay so future then you think this future? This is a little time. He's still, I think he's time to little up. Well, compared to Yah's time, we know that a day is a thousand years for us, right? For him. Um, Most of he doesn't have a thousand years left. I mean, yeah. I mean, who knows what this time is? But the point is that the devil is coming down with great anger and he, he's, he's, he's got the game on, right? He's, he's, he's ready for action. Okay, 13. And when the dragon saw that he had been thrown to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Okay, again, are we simply in metaphors? Because there, here we go back to something that if this was in the future, what are we talking about here? Is he able to persecute the mother of our Messiah or are we talking about something else? Because if this is an and, was Miriam persecuted to this degree? You know, it almost sounds like Hagar that was shipped off into the into the bushes. And, um, you know, anyone have anything? I don't know. This is a very confusing chapter. Yeah, ab- absolutely. We, yeah, we, we don't know if this is back, time, forward, or anything like that. We're just simply reading it with you guys. And if you guys have ideas out there, and everybody has lots and lots and lots of ideas out there. So um, put your guys' thoughts in the comments. Let's see what you guys have to think about this. 14. And the woman was given two wings of a great eagle to fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nursed for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Okay? Again... This has to be metaphorical. Well, yeah. I mean, but there's... I mean, so, you know, wings of the eagle, you know, she was able to escape, right? Um, And find her place in the wilderness. But what are we talking about here, right? Are we talking in the future or are we talking in the past? Um, You know, because we don't know. We don't have any more scriptures... On the life of Messiah Yahushua and his mother and his stepdad, or not stepdad, but I guess his his dad, but it wasn't his biological dad. Okay, 15. 
And out of his mouth, the serpent spewed water like a river after the woman to cause her to be swept away by the river. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the river, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. I don't know if we're doing any kind of justice to this, this so book. So maybe the woman is like Yah's people. So that's true. Well, it said from the people. woman that the, the, our king came, right? Um, it could definitely be people. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, people will have a ton of speculation on all of this stuff, and um, as we do. 17. And the, let's see. Yep, and the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed, those guarding the commandments of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahushua Hamashiach. All right. Well, that's the only verse in this entire chapter that I could probably that made sense. explain to you guys what this means. And even if we take away nothing else from this and we don't understand anything else out of this, this is it. Who is the seed of Who's who's the brother and sister of Messiah Yahushua? Who would be the those seed? Those who do the will and keep the commandments of Yahuwah. Yeah, those who do the will and keep the commandments of our Creator. And that's what it says right here. The dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to fight with the remnant of her seed. That would be us. That would be the Torah keepers. Anybody who is keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator is a brother and sister of Messiah Yahushua and is a son of Elohim. And so that is our enemy... And that is the enemy who is going to be coming at us hardcore. And there's two qualifications of the people who are literally saved. And people don't get this. Nobody cares about any of this stuff. It says right there, those guarding the commands of Yahuwah, right? When you take the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator and you toss them in the ditch, you toss them on the tree, or they don't apply to your life, you are not guarding the commands of Yahuwah. The only good news that you may have out of this is that for a brief moment in time is that you will not be persecuted like those who keep the law, statutes, and commands. It appears that those who keep the law, statutes, and commands of our creator become enemy number two, because enemy, uh, number three, because enemy number one is Yah, enemy number two is Yahushua, and then the, the, the seed of the remnant is us. And, um, and also it says the second thing about those who are saved are those who possess the witness of Yahushua HaMashiach. If you deny the son, you will be denying the father. If you deny the father, you're denying the son. Same thing, but they're not a trinity. We're not talking a, a trinity of that kind of thing. So, anyone, does anyone have anything on this? No, not really. I mean, I think I think that the woman he was attacking, I think this is your, your Hosatan attacking Jehovah's people, and then he's attacking uh, his people in the future as well. Yeah. So it, I think the woman was like something that started like the these things like the witness in that and then she continued the people like these are we are the seed of the people that are that kept yeah. and have the witness yeah and then women could all be spiritual i mean everything we're talking about here could be something spiritual that we absolutely do not understand and you will have people that will in, devote entire years and, and times to trying to figure this stuff out but what we can do is we can take and we can put it to notes and when we see these things coming to pass then we know where we are at in a timeline until then, it's only going to be speculation because nobody knows the time or date. Yah only knows. And, you know, I think the world has a long ways to go as far as evil goes. I think the evil people are rising up. And I think this I think it's going to become like a, a rebel hellhole here on this earth. And it's going to get far worse than anything we've ever seen. And the evil is going to just become springing forth further than what we see. But... Um, what we need to do right now is we need to keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. Um, those are the people who are saved. And you don't, even if you have Hasatan and the dragon and all these people that are sitting here fighting you because you're keeping the laws, statutes, and commands, that's a good thing. Look, our Creator will save us. Our Creator has the power to save us. He will interfere and He will intervene and He will come into the acts of darkness and He will save His people. It's happened throughout all of scriptures. We have personal miracles that are endless that have, that have happened and have followed me pretty much all my life that have followed me now. Supernatural things that happen here and around our farm, supernatural things that happen in and around that you cannot explain. Things of fires burning, raging out of control and stopping in the middle of dry grass, just out of nowhere. So you will see more miracles from our creator who will save you and has the power to save you and has the messengers to save you, but you gotta be loyal. 
And if you are not obeying and have obedience to our creator, that's not loyalty. That's disrespect and that's unloyal. And Messiah Yahushua says, he will tell you to depart from him, you who work Torah-lessness. Okay, everybody, I think that's good. We will uh, see you guys tomorrow. We hope you have a wonderful day and we are out. All right, shalom. shalom.